Hello to all the trolls out there, this is Universe Sandbox, a giant space and physics simulator. Since you do all sorts of wonky tonky funky wonky things to the, the Earth and surrounding planets, galaxies, meteors, moons, stars, and all that sorts of stuff that makes all those physics nerds just go, ah. That is not an exact noise. Anyway, apologies to the chemistry nerds out here. I want a chemistry simulator just as much as you do, but for now we have to settle for crashing the Earth into the Mars. Into the Mars. At 200 miles per hour. Actually, that's nothing compared to solar speed. Solar sp And now I'm just mixing up terms now, so let's resume and hopefully I'll be able to talk correctly like a normal person. No, I'll never be able to do that. Go. Here is our first and most basic simulation. You may be wondering, what is that collection of dots and overlapping words in the center? Well, that is our solar system with the sun and uh, all the planets and the orbiting uh, meteors. Oh, wait, there's Pluto. Let me uh, do something to make this more accurate. Yeah, that, that's better now that Pluto's gone. We can resume our lives. Yeah, there we go. There's the sun. It looks absolutely tiny just from this scale, but let's zoom in on it. Zoom in. Look at that sun. That doesn't look as big as you think it was, but it's absolutely massive. And let me show you, with one of this game's simplest and best features, the charts. Charts are boring, but look, it shows everything in scale. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? Let's just, like, line up with Earth, get into it. We're tiny. We're tiny and insignificant, except it feel dwarfed by the sun and Neptune, I guess. Neptune. On the other end of the spectrum, here's a something much, much smaller. There's simply the Earth and the Moon. And, like, I can add in something to orbit around, like, say, a uh, second moon. Second moon orbiting around the Earth. Much closer, much closer. Or on a smaller scale, teapots. Teapot orbiting around the Earth. Because why not? I do what I want. Look at that tiny little teapot. If you're wondering why this is going so fast, it's because every frame that passes on this screen, with with an average of 24 frames per second, uh, two minutes passes. And the real-time comparison is every real second about an hour is passing. Meaning, mm, 24 seconds equals one Earth day. And I can really ramp that up. Let's make that... Two hours is equal to one second. Okay. No, no, ten hours. I want to see the insane speed. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. This is insane. Let go of the teapot. Look at the orbit that teapot is making. And you can actually see, just ever so slowly, the Earth is actually moving. Because it does that. We're doing this. We're falling in space for... We're doing this every single day. We're doing that. That's absolutely amazing. And also really pretty ring orbit fascination things. On a much larger scale, here is two galaxies colliding at one million and a half years per second. Best feature of this game. You can watch this in real time. Which is nice. Of course, real time is boring when you're watching galaxies collide. So let's ramp it up to 11 million years passing per second and watch the magic happen. Oh my gosh. It's an intergalactic Pokemon battle. And it's the world's best Star Trek intro. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. And I'm showing what a massive nerd I am on the internet again, of course. Just look at that. Look at how pretty that is. That is because over hundreds of millions of years, we've caused intergalactic, uh, pretty much a giant intergalactic chicken fight that nobody won because they smashed into each other head first and created uh, what looked like a ton of hornets fighting. Just look at that. Absolutely fantastic. If you can't tell, I like physics and space and explodey galaxies smashing into each other. 
We're back in our solar system for another interesting experiment. This game lets you toy with all sorts of things about the uh, planets and the bodies in them. For example, I can change the velocity, the density, the diameter, and the mass of the planet. Let's make this the si this Earth, which is the size of 1.00 Earths. Let's uh, add a few zeros to that. It sucked in the sun and turned into the sun. Look at that speed. The planet of Uranus and Neptune are they're each being sucked in at increasingly sp at increasing speeds. Uranus is going at a thousand kilometers per second, about to crash into the new Earth sun. It's not a super fantastic, super realistic physics simulator, because if it was, my computer would not be able to run it. For example, if the sun were to crash into an Earth that were suddenly to become the size of uh, uh, several thousand Earths, then it would not become a sun itself, it would simply become a hot molten mess. But, current temperature of the Earth is really flippin' hot, because that is in Celsius, not just degrees, children. There comes Neptune at 3,000 kilometers. Jeez. It was going so fast it actually missed. Sucking in outside asteroids. Yep, that's the power of when you crash the sun into a massive Earth. This is why I would make an awful god, because I'd try this once and I'd have to keep recreating life, because I'd try it again to try to figure out where it all went wrong. I'd know exactly where it all went wrong, but I'd still be doing it for giggles. Here comes 2002 UX25 into the Earth. The, the, the gravity is so strong that a lot of them are being bent off course the moment they get close enough. And rather than being sucked in, there, it's like uh, they're bouncing off of a uh, pinball thingy. Not a pinball bumper. Look at those lines. Those absolutely fantastic lines. Jeez. Space, man. If that last experiment made you feel insignificant and small, well, we have other uh, simulations for simple-minded sheep as you. For example, pool balls to scale. Nothing too special about them, except for this uh, game has a feature where rather than putting things in orbit around stuff, you can shoot them at them. And so, there, there is a cue ball being fired at racked pool balls, but that's going far too slow. There's going to be no momentum. So, uh... Yep, momentum. The power of it. This is, this is barely going anywhere. Because these pool balls were actually made to scale. Incredibly tiny, insignificant. Barely even see them. Well, in comparison to these pool balls, let's simply put down a to scale bowling ball. You know? Right there. That's how tiny these things are. A die. There's a die. You see that? It's, a, it's all perspective. Soccer ball. It's all being sucked together. And now for the real perspective changer, planet Earth. You can't even see them anymore because the simulation can't really show them on the same scale. What is... I can't even... That, that's the trajectory of two pool balls. You can barely even see them hurtling towards planet Earth. I'm sorry if I get a bit excited. But this is awesome. The kind of thing I've been waiting for my whole life. I'm going to end this with a very simple uh, experiment. What would happen if the sun were to become a black hole? Because I'm sure that's something that you've all wondered at some point in your alone time. Black hole. Interesting. There's absolutely no change. Despite the fact that the density has increased, although the mass hasn't, the diameter hasn't. Hmm. Oh, actually, the diameter has gone down drastically. You can't see this because, you know, it's a bl Oh my. That is a black hole. It needs to be bigger, though. It's so t it's t so tiny, you can barely see it. It's 5.91 kilometers across. Let's make it the size of Jupiter. Oh my gosh!
That happens so fast, just in an instant, increasing something from just a couple miles across to the size of Jupiter, a black hole, shot these planets outward in so far that I can, can't even catch up to them scrolling out as far as I can. That's insane, yo. That's wiggity whack. Now, let's uh, get out of this video before I start getting too street for y'all. Goodbye, trolls. Black hole sun!